how does the Behringer SL75C compare to a Shure SM57? And spoiler, can you use EQ to make them sound more similar? That's what we're going to find out in this video. Hey, Julian Krauss here, and this is the SL75C, Behringer's interpretation of the Shure SM50. Okay, it's a blatant ripoff, and this of course screams for a proper comparison, so that's what we are going to do in this video. If it wasn't already obvious by the name, using the same numbers but backwards, the similarities become even more apparent if you look at the two microphones side by side. As you can see, they look very similar, and at a glance you might even mistake the SL75C for an SM57. That said, there is a pretty significant price difference between the two. With a cost of around 20 bucks, you can buy about 5 SL75Cs for the cost of one SM57. And keep this in mind while we are comparing these two mics. Let's start with the build quality and then check out the audio performance of the SL75. The mic body of the SL75 is a solid chunk of metal, and the weight is pretty close to a real SM57. The capsule of the microphone is made out of plastic, and the grill does not rotate like on the original SM57. The mic capsule on my particular unit also wiggles slightly, so the full metal body feels very solid and can take a beating, but you probably have to be a bit more careful with the mic capsule. By the way, one more difference in the construction between the SL75 and SM57 is that the SL75 has no transformer inside. The SM57 uses a step-up transformer to increase the voltage from the capsule, whereas the SL75's capsule is directly connected to the XLR port. That's pretty much all there is to say about the build quality of the mic, so let's check out some measurements. First of all, the on-axis frequency response. As you can see, the response from 500 Hz to about 1.5 kHz is very flat. Then it starts to rise and peaks around 4.3 kHz with a whopping plus 8 decibels. The response then falls off to plus 2 dB at 6.6 .6 kHz and then rises again to plus 6.5 dB at 10 kHz before it falls off steeply. So it is safe to say that the SL75C has quite an accentuated high frequency response. In real life, not all sound hits the microphone directly from the front. When you record in a room, there will be reflections hitting the microphone from all different sides. That's why it is interesting to have a look at the so-called diffuse field response. This curve is an average of many responses from all around the microphone, and this resembles the way that diffuse sound coming from all sides is picked up by the microphone. As you can see, the diffuse field response sits a bit lower, but closely resembles the on-axis response. This shows that the reverberation in a room has the same tonal balance as the on-axis sound. This also means that the microphone's directivity stays quite constant. You can see this even better in the directivity index. The directivity index is flat up to around 6 kHz, where it starts to rise slightly. The flat DI at plus 4 dB indicates that the SL75C has a constant cardioid pickup pattern up to around 6 kHz, and then the mic gets slightly more directional, approaching a hypercardioid pickup pattern towards 10 kHz. Now, the big question is, how does this sound compare to a Shure SM57? Before we dive deeper into my measurements, I want to give you a chance to listen to both microphones side by side. <laughs> Nothing travels faster than the speed of light, with the possible exception of bad news, which obeys its own special laws. Nothing travels faster than the speed of light, with the possible exception of bad news, which obeys its own special laws. As you can hear, the SL75C sounds quite different than the SM57. The SL75 has much more of a V shape, meaning it accentuates the bass while simultaneously providing an elevated treble range resulting in a V-shaped frequency response. 
and you can see this in the on-axis frequency response measurements. The SL75C has a much stronger peak in the higher frequencies and it does not roll off the base as early as the SM57. This is how the diffuse field responses compare and here you can see pretty much the same thing. The SL75C accentuates the treble and bass much more than the SM57. Okay, so obviously the SL75C and SM57 do not sound the same. You heard that in the samples and the measurements show this as well. Now the question is, can we use EQ to make the SL75C sound more like an SM57? To answer this question, you have to understand that when you use EQ, you always change the on-axis frequency response of a microphone, but you also always change the off-axis response as well. This means that regardless how much EQ you use, you cannot change the directivity of a microphone in post. So if you got two microphones with very different directivity indices, they will pretty much always sound different, regardless how much EQ you use. The good news is that the directivity index of both microphones is fairly similar, which indicates that they can be made to sound fairly similar using equalization, because when you match the on-axis frequency response of the microphone, the diffuse field response will match as well. Now we only have to find out which EQ settings to apply to the SL75C to match its on-axis frequency response to the SM57. For that, I calculated the differences between the two mics, which results in this curve. If this curve was a flat line, both microphones would have an identical frequency response. So the goal is to make this difference as flat as possible. I let REW calculate the needed EQ filters and fine-tune them a bit to make it easier to put them into an EQ in a DAW. Here are my settings. If you want your SL75C to sound more like an SM57, you can simply copy these settings into pretty much any equalizer in any DAW. By the way, the Q factor sets how wide these filters are. A high Q factor results in a narrower filter and lower Q factors in wider filters. The EQ in your DAW should give you the option to type in the Q factor for the filter for optimal results. After applying the EQ, the difference between the two mics has become much less and for the most part the frequency range is now within plus or minus 1 dB. And this is how the on-axis frequency response compare after the EQ has been applied to the SL75C. It's not perfect, but it's definitely much closer to the SM57 with EQ. So without further ado, let's hear how the SL75C compares to the SM57 with the EQ settings applied. Nothing travels faster than the speed of light, with the possible exception of bad news, which obeys its own special laws. Nothing travels faster than the speed of light, with the possible exception of bad news, which obeys its own special laws. Again, not perfect, but some samples are surprisingly close. Especially on the bass and voice samples, the EQ works very well. Only higher frequency content like hi-hats in the music sounded noticeably different. One thing to keep in mind is that probably nobody's going to hear your recording in an A-B test. Without the reference, I think many people would believe the EQ'd SL75C could have been a Shure SM57. Okay, after all my testing and EQing, what do I think of the Behringer SL75C? Is it a good sounding mic? Well, the sound of a microphone is highly subjective, so I'll leave this one up to you. But I think it's important to know what you're getting with the SL75C, because many people are going to buy this mic and expect to get an SM57 for cheap. That's pretty much the whole reason why Behringer designed the mic like this. But I also think that this is a bit deceiving, because the SL75 does not sound like an SM57. Yes, you can get it closer with EQ, as demonstrated in this video, but out of the box it sounds quite different. So don't buy this mic thinking that you'll plug it in and it will just sound like an SM57. That's simply not the case. 
On the other hand, if you like the more V-shaped sound of the SL75C with its elevated bass and treble, or if it's okay for you to use some EQ to make it sound more similar to an SM57, then I think the SL75C is an absolute bargain. If you like my in-depth reviews, consider supporting me on Patreon. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos like this. I will see you all in the next one.